Look, we talk about education. I propose that what we take is those very poor schools, give every single teacher a raised thousand dollar level. Number two, the teachers deal with- I believe in public education. And in order to strengthen it, something- Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching from. Thank you so much for clicking. I'm so glad to have you all here. So politicians are going to be having a debate on what is education. So let's check it out. I'd like to have an academic discussion now about education. Mr. Yang, we'll stay with you. Here in Houston, the school district is facing yet another year of spending cuts. Like schools across the country, the system faces many challenges. One of them, thousands of students are leaving traditional public schools and going to charter schools. Mm -hmm. You're the most vocal proponent on this stage for charter schools. You have said that Democrats who want to limit them are, quote, just jumping into bed with teachers unions and doing kids a disservice. Why isn't taxpayer money better spent on fixing traditional public schools? Let me be clear, I am pro good school. I've got a kid, uh, one of my uh, little boys just started public school last week and I was not there because I was running for president. So we need to pay teachers more because the data clearly shows that a good teacher is worth his or her weight in yeah. gold. We need to lighten up the emphasis on standardized tests, which do not measure anything fundamental about our character or human worth. Nice. But here's the big one. The data clearly shows that 65 to 70 percent of our students' outcomes are determined outside of the school. Mm. We're talking about time spent at home with the parents, words read to them when they're young, stress levels in the house, income, type of neighborhood. We're putting money into schools, and educators know this. We're saying you're 100% responsible for educating our kids, but you can only control 30%. They all know this. The answer is to put money directly into the families and neighborhoods to give our kids a chance to learn and our teachers a chance to teach. Exactly. Nice. Mayor Booby Judge, 45 seconds to respond. Good, 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 good. Motivate them Step one people. is appoint a secretary of education who actually believes in public education. I believe in public education. And in order to strengthen it, some things are very complex for preparing for a future where knowledge is at your fingertips, but we got to teach more to do with critical thinking and social and emotional learning. Some of it is extremely simple. We've just got to pay teachers more. And we've got to lift up the teaching profession. I always think of a story from South Bend of uh, friends who host exchange students from Japan. They had a student one year who wanted to be a teacher, and they kept in touch with her when she went back to Japan and to college. Uh, she took the exam to try to become a teacher uh, in a society that really regards teachers and compensates teachers well. And she came up just short. So you know what she did? Since she was academically good but couldn't quite make the cut to be a teacher, she had a fallback, fallback plan. She became a doctor. That is how seriously some countries treat the teaching profession. If we want to get the results that we expect for our children, we have to support and compensate the teaching profession, respect teachers the way we do soldiers, and pay them more like the way we do doctors. Nice. Senator Warren, to use Mr. Yang's term, are you just you jumping into bed with teachers? teachers' unions? You know, I think I'm the only person on the stage who facility. has been a public school teacher. I've wanted to be a public school teacher since I was in second grade. And let's be clear in all the ways we talk about this, money for public schools should stay in public schools, not go anywhere else. I've already made my commitment. I will, we will have a secretary of education who has been a public school Ooh. teacher. I think this is ultimately about our values. Mm. I have proposed a two cent wealth tax on the top one tenth of one percent in this country. That would give us enough money to start with our babies by providing universal child care for every baby age zero to five, universal pre-K for every three-year-old and four-year-old in this country, Thank you, raise Senator. the wages of every child care worker and preschool teacher in this country, cancel student loan debt for 95% of the folks who've got it. Thank you, Senator. And strengthen our unions. This is how we build an America that reflects our values, not just where the money comes from with the billionaires and corporate executives. Senator Harris, 45 seconds to respond. My first grade teacher, Mrs. Frances Wilson, God rest her soul, 
attended my law school graduation. I think most of us would say that we are not where we are without the teachers who believed in us. I have offered in this campaign a proposal to deal with this, which will be the first in the nation federal investment in closing the teacher pay gap, which is $13,500 a year. Because right now in our public schools, our teachers, 94% of them are coming out of their own pocket to help pay for school supplies. And that is wrong. I also want to talk about where we are here at TSU and what it means in terms of HBCUs. I have, as part of my proposal, that we will put two trillion billion dollars into investing in our HBCUs for teachers because, because, because one, as a proud graduate of a historically black college and university, I will say, I will say that it is our HBCUs that disproportionately produce teachers and those who serve in these many professions. But Thank also, you, Senator. but this is a critical point. If a black child has a black teacher before the end of third grade, they are 13% more likely to go to college. Mm -hmm. If that child has had two black teachers before the end of third grade, they are 32% more likely to go to college. So when we talk about investing in our public education system, it is at the source of so much. When we fix it, that will fix so many other things. We must invest in the Thank potential you, of our children. Senator Sanders, and I strongly believe you can judge a society based on how it treats its children, and we are Thank failing you, on this issue. Guess what? You're guessing. All right, here's the answer. <laughs> we are the wealthiest country in the history of the world, and yet we have the highest child poverty rate of almost any country on earth. Mm. We have teachers in this country who are leaving education because they can't work two or three jobs to support That's themselves. Right. Exactly. Which is why under my legislation, we will move to see that every teacher in America makes at least $60,000 a year. Woo. What we will also do nice is not only have universal pre-K, we will make public colleges and universities and HBCUs debt-free. And what we will also do, because this is an incredible burden on millions and millions of young people who did nothing wrong except try to get the education they need, we are gonna cancel all student debt in this country. Thank you, Senator. And Thank we you, are Senator. going to do that by imposing a tax on Wall Street speculation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I want to come to you and talk to you about inequality in schools and race. In a conversation about how to deal with segregation in schools back in 1975, you told a reporter, I don't feel responsible for the sins of my father and grandfather. I feel responsible for what the situation is today, for the sins of my own generation. And I'll be damned if I feel responsible to pay for what happened 300 years ago. You said that some 40 years ago. But as you stand here tonight, what responsibility do you think that Americans need to take to repair the legacy of slavery in our country? Well, they have to deal with the, the look, there is institutional segregation in this country. And from the time I got involved, I started dealing with that. Redlining, banks, making sure that we are in a position where, look, we talk about education. I propose that what we take is those very poor schools, the Title I schools, triple the amount of money we spend from 15 to 45 billion a year, give every single teacher a raise to the equal raise of getting out of the, the $60,000 level. Number two, make sure that we bring in to help the, student, the, the teachers deal with the problems that come from home. The problems that come from home, we, need, we have one school psychologist for every 1,500 kids in America today. It's crazy. The teachers are, and I'm married to a teacher. My deceased wife is a teacher. They have every problem coming to them. We have to make sure that every single child does, in fact, have three, four, and five-year-olds go to school. School, not daycare, school. We bring social workers into homes of parents to help them deal with how to raise their children. It's not that they don't want to help. They don't, want, they don't know quite what to do. 
play the radio, make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night, the, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear words. A kid coming from a very poor school, or a very poor background, will hear four million words fewer spoken by the time they get there. There's Thank so you, much Vice we, President. no, I'm, I'm gonna go like the rest of them do, twice over, okay? <laughs> because because here, here's the deal. The deal is that we've got this a little backwards. And by the way, in Venezuela, we should be allowing people to come here from Venezuela. I know Maduro. I've confronted Maduro. Number two, you talk about the need to do something in Latin America. I'm the guy that came up with $740 million to see to it those three countries, in fact, change their system so people don't have a chance to leave. You're all acting like we just discovered this yesterday. Thank, thank you, thank Mr. You Vice much. President. Secretary Castro. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, that's, that's quite a lot. Uh, but, uh, you know, I grew up in one of those neighborhoods that folks have talked about, in a neighborhood that was grappling with the legacy of segregation. In fact, in two, two public school districts uh, that were involved in a 1973 Supreme Court case challenging how Texas financed its schools. And uh, I know that today our schools are segregated because our neighborhoods are segregated. Now, I have an education plan, like a lot of folks up here, that would pay teachers more, that would recruit uh, diverse ranks of teachers, that would invest in our public schools. But I also believe that we have to connect the dots to uplift the quality of life, to invest in housing opportunity, to invest in job opportunity, to invest in community schools that offer resources like parents able to go back and get their GED and healthcare opportunities, and those things that truly, truly ensure that the entire family can prosper. Those are the types of things that we need to do in addition to lifting up our public schools. You asked a second ago about charter schools. Look. Um, it is a myth that charter schools are better than public schools. They're not. And so, Thank you, Secretary. While, while I'm not categorically against charter schools, I would require more transparency and accountability from them than is required right now. Senator Booker, coming to you now. It was 65 years ago this year that the Supreme Court outlawed racial segregation in public schools. Yet for millions of students of color today, segregation remains a reality. Non-white districts typically receive $2,200 less per student than those in white districts. This means older books, less access to computers, and often worse outcomes. What is your plan to address segregation? And I'm not just talking about the achievement gap, but I'm talking about the opportunity gap in education. So I'm hearing a lot of conversations on the stage that, and the way we talk about communities of color. Look, I, I live in a black and brown community below the poverty line. I've lived in public housing projects almost for a decade and saw the anguish of parents who are just so deeply frustrated that they don't have a school that serves their genius. I think I'm the only person on the stage, even though I had no formal authority as mayor to run a school system, I stepped up and took responsibility for our schools and we produce results. A lot of folks here talking about raising teacher salary, we actually did it in Newark, New Jersey, and we didn't stop there. We, had, we closed poor performing charter schools, but dagnabbit, we expanded high performing charter schools. We were a city that said we need to find local solutions that work for our community. The results speak for themselves. We're now the number one city in America for beat the odd schools from high poverty to high performance. Strategies like investing in our children work. And I'll tell you this, I, I am tired of us thinking about these problems isolated, disconnected from the other issues. That's why my friend Secretary Castro is 100% right. We are in the reality we are right now because, Vice President, of overtly racist policies, not 400 years ago, just in my lifetime, that we're redlining communities, disinvesting in communities. And more than just that, my kids are not only struggling with racial segregation and housing, and, and the challenges of underfunded schools, but they're also struggling with environmental injustice. If you've talked to someone who's a parent of a child who's had permanent brain damage because of lead, you'll know this is a national problem because there's over 3,000 jurisdictions in America where children have more than twice the blood lead levels of Flint, Michigan. Thank you. And so if I'm President of the United States, it is a holistic solution to education, from raising teacher salary, fully funded special education, but combating the issues of poverty, combating the issues of racial segregation, combating the issues of a criminal justice system Thank that you, takes Senator. parents away from their kids, and 
and dealing with environmental justice as a major pillar of any climate policy. So I love this, you know, debate on education. Like we all know education is a medium at which we learn is a means of pressing information. So they are asking this candidate, what do you think should be? be done when it comes to education and most of them were talking about teachers they should increase salaries of teachers teachers need to be appreciated because they are the one impacting to the student's life so they need to you know pay them well they need to give their recognition accolades every time but also, also talk about infrastructural facility when it comes to public schools they lack a lot of infrastructural facility they upgrade the place Anywhere that is being leaked or broken, they repair it, they buy the equipment the student needs because if the student don't have things to learn or they are not in a conducive place to learn, then if they can't you know, be able to learn very well. And I love the debate. It was very interesting, very, very straightforward. I love the fact that they spoke what everybody wants to know and everybody needs to know this lamb last man spoke about environment environment matters when it comes to education so you should treat them equally treating one student you know over the student no let's treat them equally because they are all there to learn all hands are not equal even our fingers are not equal so definitely all hands are not equal when it comes to education too so we should not discriminate or segregate some set of people and say oh because this person is brilliant so you treat this person better than this person no let's try to treat them equally it was really nice to even see you know joe biden the president there it was really nice to you know hear his own point of view that was a beautiful one let me know your thoughts guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you guys in the next one bye